What is going on guys, my name is Big Mooney and this here is some Crisis 3 And I've uh, been playing this this week and it is a pretty damn fun game And uh, do you want to see some more footage of that? Let me know But uh, today we're going to be getting into some questions you guys left for me on Twitter and Facebook So if you're not getting involved in those, there's links in the description down below And uh, we can do that, but let's get into your questions now, shall we? Josh Murphy asked the very important question of beans or spaghetti hoops. And he also says, but what your opinion on the next of console and the future of gaming? Okay. But first things first, beans or spaghetti hoops? Um, probably just beans. I never have spaghetti hoops, if I'm honest. So, there's that world-changing question answered. But my opinion on the next console is in the future of gaming, well... I think with the, uh, the PlayStation 4 and the rumored Xbox 720 that should be coming out this year, uh, games are only going to get better. I mean, a lot of people are looking at the specs that are getting thrown about for the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox, uh, and they're basically scoffing at them and going, oh, well, that's not as good as my game in PC. And, well, right, they aren't as good as the game in PCs, obviously, but at the same time, this is definitely a step in the right direction for gaming. I mean, we're going to have actual games that are close, or at least closer, to uh, what they're like on PC on consoles. And you need to remember, consoles are gaming optimized machines. These things are built to play games. So, a PlayStation with those specs is gonna run a game better than a PC with the same specs, if you understand what I mean. So I'm thinking that the introduction of the new PlayStation is definitely gonna be a new thing. Some of the games that they showed off, like Watch Dogs and stuff like that, that looks amazing, I cannot wait for that. So, it's going to push developers into making better games because they have better hardware at their disposal. And uh, I'm really looking forward to that. We could end up with some classic games coming out in the next few years. Next question, though. I, Tim Malik Duck, asked me, are you going to be going to any gaming conventions in the future? Now, gaming conventions and stuff like that is something that I would like to experience at some point. From what I've seen of them, some of them can be really fun and there's a lot of crap to do, but then again, a lot of it is waiting in line, and I'm not a big fan of waiting in lines. But going to something like E3 or whatever is something that's on my sort of to-do list uh, in the future. When I have enough money to do something like that, then I definitely would. I mean, who would, wouldn't want to travel out to fucking LA to go and look at some brand new shit? I mean, come on, man. Obviously, I want to go and do that sort of thing, so... That would definitely be something I'm interested in. Either that, or go to one of uh, the PAX events in America, or possibly Gamescom in Germany. That's also a place I've never been to. So it just depends on what opportunities arise in the future, if I have enough money to go to something, if a company's willing to send me to one of these things, wink wink, we could possibly get going to one of these things and have a good time. Hopefully that'll happen in the near future. Max Bovenkamp asked me, what game would you play the most in 2013? I don't know if you mean what new game am I looking forward to the most, or what game I will physically put the most hours into. And if it's the latter there, then that would definitely be FIFA. You guys might think that I play a crap load of Battlefield 3 because I make Battlefield 3 videos. And it's really not the case, to be honest. I play more FIFA than anything else by a long distance. I've actually got more hours on FIFA 13 than I do on Battlefield 3. And Battlefield 3 is over a year older than FIFA 13. So, I think that says enough. But as for what games I want to play in 2013 that are coming out this year, uh, the game I'm looking forward to the absolute most is The Last of Us. I cannot wait for The Last of Us. Oh, and also that little game called GTA 5. That looks pretty decent. Call Me Raz asked me, are you happy with your new PC? Also, any secret new projects for your channel? First things first, if I had a secret project on the go, it wouldn't be very secret if I told you about it now, would it? But to answer that question, no, I actually don't anyway. I've got a few ideas rolling about that I would kind of like to do, but we'll see what happens. As for the other question, are you happy with your new PC? Damn right, I'm happy with my new PC. I can run games uh, quite well, actually. Um, for instance, DayZ, that was a game I really could not play using my old computer. That's why I didn't have any DayZ videos back when DayZ was sort of the big new thing and everyone was playing it. Oh my fucking god, I was playing it as well, but I couldn't record it, at least at a steady frame rate. I mean, no one wants to see a game getting played at 15 frames per second. YouTube is not interested in slideshows of games. And also a Planet Side 2 as well, even though I've not played that as much as I was hoping to, but whatever. But for the new PC, yeah, it runs games a lot smoother than it used to, at higher settings and etc. And 
it's all around just a very good machine in comparison to the old piece of crap that I used to run, which basically I was scared it was going to go up in flames at any moment. And also it sounded like I was standing right behind some form of jet turbine or something like that. So overall, yeah, I am happy with my computer, yeah. Sean Blackburn asked me, football or rugby? And what do you think of upping the player count in Battlefield to 128 or being able to cross-platform play on the same servers? First things first, football, I'm just not interested in rugby whatsoever. Like I said earlier, I play a shitload of FIFA, so obviously I like football. And for anyone out there, it's called football, not soccer. I will actually karate kick you in the throat for calling it that. Damn Americans. But as for more players in Battlefield, that could be interesting. Then again, I've played some 64 player servers on the PC in Battlefield 3, and they've not been very fun at times. Sometimes more players does not equal more fun. That's really not always how games work. It's how balanced the game is. If you can have a massive map that can accommodate 128 players and everything would be really fun and it wouldn't be too much for the game to handle uh, or also it wouldn't be too much for any individual player to handle then uh, that could be really good. I mean, when there's a lot of people in a game what can tend to happen is you can get one kill and die, one kill and die, one kill and die because you really can't accommodate with how many people there are around you're gonna get shot by someone at any point so Sometimes it isn't, it just isn't that fun. As for cross-platform play, we know that it is possible because obviously uh, there was the example of Portal 2 was able to play between PlayStation 3 and people on PC with using Steam. You could play each other with that. That was pretty fucking cool. But I don't see it happening with the uh, consoles because the consoles are too competitive with each other. They're not going to design a game where you can connect to the other console. Sony and Microsoft don't usually play ball like that. <laughs> They're going to try and keep one feature for themselves, which is where the middleman comes in, the PC. That's obviously where Portal 2 went and teaming up with uh, Steam and PlayStation 3 so they could do that. You're not going to have both consoles, but possibly some consoles connect to PCs sometimes. We'll wait and see if that happens. That'd be pretty cool if it did. Jolly old Jim. So he asked me, what is your take on franchises that push out yearly titles such as Assassin's Creed, card and various sports games and etc. Now obviously the glaring one that you would use as a main example of this would be Call of Duty. The last six card games, I would say the difference between Call of Duty 4 and Call of Duty Black Ops 2 are very minimal. There's really not been a whole lot of advancement in that amount of time for a franchise like that. I'm not a fan of that happening, but if people are gonna keep buying it, they're gonna keep making it. So the best thing that can happen is people stop fucking buying it, but it's gonna keep happening now, isn't it? Now obviously, like I said earlier on, I play a lot of FIFA, and I buy the FIFA games when they come out. I mean, my view on FIFA though is, how much can you possibly change a football game. I mean, what are you going to start doing? Incorporating fucking dragons and shit. Like, what are you going to do to change a football game? I feel that the way that they change those, the sports games, as they'll introduce like one or two new mechanics, they'll obviously update their rosters and stuff like that, have everything as accurate and authentic as possible, and try and make the best game they possibly can out of what they can really do. So I don't really blame the sports games as much as I do other kind of titles that really don't try and innovate as much as they possibly could do. But then again, you need to ask that as well about Call of Duty. If they change the formula, would people still buy it? That's obviously what Activision fear. And because uh, they've basically stuck with their guns, they've stuck to the exact same formula year in and year out. That's why they keep making the same ones over and over again, because people keep buying that kind of game. If they change that, people won't buy it. That's this plain and simple way to look at it. Unless they do something absolutely incredible with it, which I hope they do at some point, uh, it's not going to change. They're not going to change the way it is, unfortunately. As for Assassin's Creed, yeah, they kind of do keep making the same game, don't they? Assassin's Creed's pretty decent though, but we'll see how that goes in the near future. The inevitable question that comes up on every single Q&A. Ronan Rond, why Big Mooney 06? I'm 6 foot 5, my second name is Mooney and the account was made in 2006. Heart wrench and stuff. But he asked me another question here asking me what inspired me to start making YouTube videos and was it watching other YouTubers or what? In a way, kinda yeah. I mean, I was bored. I saw other people doing this sort of thing. People like blame truth and stuff like that. One of the sort of first commentators on YouTube. And uh, I saw what they were doing. And I was like, I could do that. 
you know, that doesn't look too difficult. I mean, I'm at the time it was Call of Duty 4, and I was pretty decent at Call of Duty 4, and I was looking at the gameplays, and I was like, yeah, man, I could fucking do that, and talk to people at the same time? Yeah, could probably do that too. Although I did start out trying to make montages, which were awful, and I quickly, <laughs> very quickly kind of changed my formula onto doing some uh, commentaries and stuff like that. People started liking that sort of thing, so I stuck with it. And I really, that was it, really. <laughs> That's all as far as I went. And here I am now. Frank Meyer? I, I'm not sure. Are you planning on making a sequel to Useless Weapon or any other sort of live action stuff? Yeah, I'd definitely be up for doing more live action stuff. It's just that getting people together that I know would like to work on things like this. It's difficult. Lots of different people that I know, they're all doing different things. They're either working like full time, like ridiculous hours or they live quite far away, have no job, and can't, you know, spare the money that they do have to come through and fucking do stuff. So I need to organize something uh, to get some filming on the go. As for Useless Weapon 2, uh, one of our friends is writing it currently. I was speaking to him the other day about that, actually. And uh, hopefully I may actually speak later on about that too, see what's going on with that. But currently it is in the writing process and maybe I'm thinking during the summer we're going to film that. We'll see. I think it's like a full week job of filming that, so we'll see what happens with that. Nox283 asks, would you be interested in trying out an MMO if you had the time? Hashtag Big Mooney QA. Damn you, Nox, that's not how you spell Mooney. Question denied. One final question here coming from Steve who asking, what the heck is going on with your second channel? Did it die? Well, I can say right now that I don't even know myself, to be honest with you. Uh, I'm not really sure what the future of that channel is. The stuff I have done on there so far I have enjoyed and I'm sorry to all the people that have been waiting for more episodes on that channel. I'm gonna make a video, like a vlog or something like that, uh, explaining what the deal is exactly and maybe it'll either kill off the channel or it'll revitalize the channel. Either way it depends on the reception from the people that are subscribed to it. But uh, that video will be coming out hopefully over the next, like, I don't know, few days. I meant to make it last week, but I kind of didn't. So hopefully we can get that done. Alright, thanks for your questions, guys. If you have any thoughts on my opinions in today's video, please leave them down in the comment section down below. I'm interested to hear your thoughts. And if you did enjoy, please hit the like button down below. But until next time, I have been Big Mini, and I will see you later. Goodbye.